let us consider the incredible material imbalance, an almost unfair material imbalance. This is crazy. Black has a queen and three pawns. White has a knight and a bishop. Black is up six points. So what does white have that black does not? Weak squares around the king. Is this worth six points? Let's see. By the end of this video, you're going to be able to answer the following key points about the game. We have two chess engines facing off in the TCEC, the top chess engines competition. Leela Zero has white, Stockfish has black. The game began. D4, Knight F6. C4, E6, Knight F3, Bishop B4, check. The Bogo Indian. Today, white blocks with the knight, rather than the bishop, to keep more pieces on the board. So knight d2, castle, a3, kicking the bishop back to e7. Has black wasted time? No. White normally would like his knight on c3, but the point of this retreat is for black to strike in the centre. White goes e4, but black strikes with d5, already putting a question to white centre. White advances, black retreats to d7, bishop d3. White has the centre, but black strikes again with c5. It would be great if white had the pawn on c3, then white is just holding his centre. After bishop d3 c5, white now goes h4. The point of this is black now has... no, again. The point of this is white now has a Greek gift. Bishop takes h7 check, then knight g5. So black puts a stop to that with g6. So let's just check out this gift. If you take in the centre, then bishop takes h7 check. is working out so well for white. If you take it, then knight g5 check. King g8 is just losing because queen h5. And you just cannot stop checkmate on h7 or even h8. Because black will take. You take. And we have checkmate. If you give your king room, then g6. And there's no good defensive move. So after knight g5 check, king g6. And white has a few good ways to follow up. Queen c2 check is possible. Even knight to f3. Then we're threatening h5 check. And it's so dangerous. We can't go h5 at the moment because king takes knight. So knight f3 first. Then h5 is coming. Queen c2 or queen d3. It's just so dangerous. Back to the game. g6 played. But it looks like white can just throw in h5. Just to break up the structure. But in this position, believe it or not. But this is the first key point. If you want to play like Lila Zero, you play h4 and then you castle. Now first question must be why not h5? Black has already set himself up, you could say because he's moved his g-pawn forward, so this is a target for white. But after h5, white's centre might be falling apart. c takes d4. Let's put more pressure with queen c2, then knight c5, and now bishop f1. A creative idea seen in three games. The idea is to play b4, then put the bishop back on d3. Two top players with the white pieces have been David Navarra and Ivan Cheparinov. So this is one way to play. However, Alpha Zero played Castle. And so did Ding Li Ren versus Ivan Saric. In the Batumi Olympiad, September 2018. Very strange. You play H4 and then you Castle. So what's the idea? It is all about time. Knight C6. Black is once again attacking white center. Now we have part two, the middle game. After knight c6, knight b3, defending the centre and stockfish now goes bishop takes h4, grabbing the pawn and bishop h6, rook e8 and rook e1. You don't notice it too much when you're down rook's pawn. 
black will need to use time to retreat the bishop. And that's why Lila Zero sacrificed the pawn. Black is going to move the bishop back to e7, but white would have made progress in a different way in this middle game. So after rook e1, taking in the center, and Lila doesn't... No, again. And Lila doesn't recapture straight away. Goes queen c2, giving yourself some options. Queen c2 defends the pawn on c4, and the white rook can go to c1 or to d1. It is very likely this pawn is going to drop, because Y can recapture with the knight, maybe even this knight. After queen c2, d takes c4, bishop takes c4, knight b6, rook d1. And here Stockfish played bishop d7. Black has less space, so a good general middle game strategy is to swap pieces off. So let's see what happens if you go knight c4, which might look okay, but after queen c4, White is going to take back on d4 and is going to be in full control of the only open file on the board, the d file. Now, if you play bishop d7, then we can take on d4. And notice, the pressure on the d file might be too much. Also, this bishop has been hanging on h4 for many moves. So already, tactics might work out in White's favor because if you play knight d4, Queen takes d4, and you're in trouble. Both bishops are under attack, and white is going to pick up one of them. So, rook d1, bishop d7, and knight c5. Wow. A normal move would be to take on d4, just to get your pawn back. But Leela chooses to put the knight here. This gives white extra options. The knight can take on b7. The knight can go to e4. And also, white can play b4 to gain space on the queen side. Rook c8, and now doesn't play knight b7, but b4. Knight takes b7. This looks like the wrong pawn to grab. Losing a bit of control for white. Queen c7. Notice both the knight on b7, the bishop on h4, are hanging. If you go knight d6, knight takes e5. Tactics are working out in black's favor. If you grab the rook, we're going to throw in knight takes f3 check, take, bishop takes e8. Pressure on the c file, so white defends, and now bishop f6. And after this move, black has a great position. Black can go e5. White's king side is messed up, also white is lacking a few pawns. Now after queen c7, maybe white could have just played knight c5. But then knight a5, and there's unpleasant pressure on the c file. After b4... What has happened? Why has sacrificed two pawns? All because he's going to use his time well. So after b4, knight takes c4 now, queen takes e4, bishop e7. On move 11, black took the pawn on h4. It's now move 19, so eight moves later, black has to use time to retreat it. And now knight e4, the stunning move, shocking move. Now the other option is, once again, it looks a bit wrong to grab a b pawn, queen c7 and knight c5. Now why did Leela not go for this? Maybe the advantage is not big enough because now black can attack white's queenside pawns with a5. If you grab the bishop, take b5, we have this move, knight b4. Rook attacks the queen on c4, so queen d4, knight d5. White wanted more than this. Leela wanted something different and that is exactly what happened in this game. After knight e4, very nasty discovery attack option on the queen. And that's what happened. Knight takes b4 played. And this is the reason I wanted to discuss this game with you. A normal move would be queen d4. You're being attacked by the rook, so you've got to move your queen out of the way. You might as well take something, let's say queen d4. And then black can put the knight on d5, and black has a nice position. Maybe black can unravel with bishop b5 or queen b6. After knight takes b4, this is another key point. If you want to play like Lila zero, make sure you sacrifice your queen with queen takes b4. Wow. Bishop takes b4, a takes b4. And all of you saw this position at the beginning of the video. Let's consider the incredibly unfair material imbalance. This is crazy. Black has a queen and three pawns. 
White has a knight and a bishop. Black is up six points. So what does white have that black doesn't? Weak squares around his king. Is this worth the six points? Well, we're going to find out. All the dark squares around the black king belong to white. Knight on e4 is going to hop into f6 very soon. f5 played just to gain some space. And also, you do not want to on pass on here because really the knight belongs on that square. So at the same time, after f5 is played, knight f6 check, at least there's a pawn on f5 controlling some central squares. And also, maybe a major piece can defend along the 7th rank. Maybe the rook can defend along the 7th. So that's why f5 was played. Knight f6, check. King h8, rook takes d4. Two ideas. Pressure on the default, but also giving yourself the option to transfer over to the king side. Rook c7, rook d1, rook e7, and b5. Wow, what a move. Black is all tied up in the middle of the board. Black cannot move his king as well. b5, it really highlights how bad black's position is. No, again. B5, it really highlights how bad black's position is. B6 played. Because if A6, then B6, and you are in big trouble. If this rook moves, then this rook can come in. So B6, stockfish stops that. King H2, rook B7. Knight G5, queen C8, rook D2. Leela is just waiting. Rook C7, rook D6. Rook b7, rook d4, rook c7, rook d1, rook b7, rook d4, rook c7, and not planning to swing over to the king side, but holding the center with f4. The pressure on the d file will be too much. Rook b7, and now white crashes through the center of the board. So pause the video to find the tactic. I'll give you five seconds. The move is knight takes e6. Rook takes e6 played. If bishop takes e6, this leads to checkmate. Rook d8 check. Take, take, that is it. Everything coming off. That's why after knight takes e6, rook takes e6, knight takes d7. Not taking with the white rook, but the knight, so then the knight can come back to f6. And then there's a mating net forming around black's king. Knight takes d7, king g8. Knight f6 check, king f7. So at least the king has got closer to the center. Rook d8. Rook f8 looks so dangerous, so black played queen c5 to guard f8. Now white plays knight takes h7. Grabbing this pawn is not important. The point is for the knight to come back to g5 with a devastating check. The rook on d8 covers the 8th rank. The rook on d1, it can come into the 7th rank later on. So knight takes h7 is just so dangerous. Rook e8. So then white is no longer the only one controlling the 8th rank. If you play a move like queen f2, trying to go to h4, then it's just checkmate in two moves. Knight g5 check, king e7, and an unusual checkmate with the bishop to f8. Back to the game, rook e8 played. Leela now throws in a deflection check with e6. You can't take with the king or else your rook drops. So rook takes pawn. Now knight g5 check, king f6. Now Leela goes for the material. Time to get your queen back. Rook f8 check. And here stockfish played, queen takes rook. If king e7, then this is losing as well. You can go rook f7 check, pick up the rook on b7. Check. Notice here, the king only has one square to e8. Rook takes b7. And white is just going to come in. Rook b8. Check is next. The knight is going to take the rook on e6. So if we moved the rook out the way, rook b8 check, king e7. 
Only square is e7 and bishop f8 check, just like before winning the queen. Hence, after rook f8 check, Stockfish had to give the queen back. Bishop takes f8. Now we have this material imbalance. It is a knight and a bishop for the rook. So two pieces for the rook. And here, Stockfish goes rook c7. And Leela goes rook d4, not even taking the rook. Black goes rook b7, but what if you move the rook? Well, this is the problem. And once the rook moves, rook d6 check will be over. The king has no good squares. So you have to block and then it'll be checkmate. So, rook b7, king g3. Every piece is holding black's king in a box, except the white king. So, Leela brings it in. Rook c7, rook d3, rook b7, king h4. Rook c7, and here, king g3 was played, but if I were white, I would just grab the rook here. Because I know my king on h4 can make progress. So we're going to take on e6, take, and then king g5. White is a piece up. So king g3 played, rook c4, basically giving up. And now rook d7, allowing entry on the same rank. So rook e3 check, king f2. Once the rook has moved, then there are actually two threats now, which we saw before, rook d6 check and also rook f7. Rook takes f4 check. Notice, no point moving the rook, because white will go for f7. Mate. He goes rook takes f4 check, king takes e3. White is now up two pieces, rook a4, bishop e7 check, king e5, and after king f3, white is up so much material, black resigned. So an amazing game by Leela. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. Here are the key points about the game. How to play like Leela zero in the opening. Play h4 and then castle. In the middle game, give up at least two pawns to gain time. Note white played h4, but black played bishop takes h4 on move 11. Retreating it back to e7 on move 19, costing some time and make sure you sacrifice your queen for an unusual, almost unfair material imbalance. That is how you play like Leela Zero, and that is how you win a beautiful game. If you enjoyed the show, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell, so then you'll get notified each time I release a new video. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end.